Hi, I'm Gary Kevel, a journalism professor at the College of Journalism and Mass Communications at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. And I want to talk briefly about how mobile and social media have changed journalism and look at how not all of that change is good. Years ago, in fact, in 2010, when I spoke at this, at this uh, festival, I saw the disruption of traditional journalism and I thought it was empowering. I thought it was empowering democracy by allowing the spread of information and informational, informational power to everyone with a smartphone. I thought billions of voices could be heard, they could enter the conversation, the globe could be united in a conversation, the voiceless could be, could be heard again, and we had great potential for the, a, a new democratic tool that could empower and strengthen our democracy. In that process, however, what was helping give voice to so many others was in essence a destruction of the voice of journalism and the power of journalism and some of the authority and the credibility of journalism and as we're going to find out the verification of journalism because what happened was journalism went through a redefinition we had to figure out what is journalism after social media and mobile media allowed everybody to be a publisher we had to figure out well what is a news publisher what is now a newspaper what is journalism it used to be easy journalism was what journalists wrote and what well, who was a journalist a journalist wrote for a news organization they were employed by news organizations they uh, did audio and video and text for news organizations it was pretty easy and then who was the audience the audience was that passive receiver of what journalists produced and it was a one-to-many communication system it was the editor the news director to the audience with very little feedback not much of a feedback loop very little comment and much of it was done in a sort of isolation from the audience mobile and social media changed that completely by giving people the power to be publishers using their smartphone. They changed all the definitions. So who is a journalist? Well, it could be somebody walking down the street right now, seeing that the city hall is on fire and they take a photo of it or they take a short video of it, they post it to YouTube. And within a minute or so, they have distributed news to their community. Well, that act of distributing news is what journalists used to do fairly exclusively. Now it can be done by anyone. So anyone can commit an act of news. And many of the people who do that do not want to be journalists. They don't want that responsibility, but they certainly like informing their communities and being informed by their communities. We knew, we had a very vivid example of how the role of the journalist had changed uh, when the uh, US Airways plane landed in the Hudson River. And the first information we had from that was from Twitter. First a text and then a photo from an individual, from individuals who were on ferry boats uh, in the Hudson River going about their normal uh, daily routine. A plane lands, they uh, they take a photo, they write a text, and pretty soon news media are alerted. News media throughout the world are, are uh, covering this, but only after all the incredible news had already happened. What we saw from the individual who committed an act of journalism was people standing on the wing of an airplane in the middle of the Hudson River and being rescued by ferry boats. By the time the journalists got there with their great cameras and their, their wonderful abilities to shoot excellent video, it was just a plane in the, in the Hudson River. Still pretty cool, but not exactly the news of uh, more than 100 people, around 150 people saved, no one injured after that incredible uh, landing. 
So that act of journalism was committed by someone who would have been the audience, would have been the passive audience, but now because of mobile media and social media, the audience is networked. The audience is interconnected. The audience can talk to each other with or without the participation of a news organization. News organizations have to decide now, how are they going to join the conversation? They used to be the ones who initiated the conversation and controlled the conversation. Much of that exclusive power has been eternally lost to the, the news organizations because it has been given to the audience and it will never go back. So the audience now can be publishers, they can talk about what they publish, they can give each other feedback, and they can do all this without the participation of the news organization if it's not aware of what's happening. So a big change caused by the technology is a change in the culture, the culture of the power of journalism and the power of news organizations in their community and the power of the audience, which is now active and, and uh, eagerly involved. All of this made me excited about the possibilities of, oh my gosh, now we have so many more voices. With more voices comes greater possibility for truth, greater possibility for more information, greater possibility to learn how to improve our lives uh, with more information. Of course, I saw the, the positive side of all this first, and then the world and I saw uh, the negative side, that so much information is inundating us and much of it is, is wrong, is false, is deceptive, is misleading. And how do we figure it out? How do we now decide what information to follow, what to read, and what to uh, pay attention to. So what I think has become clearer over the years is that as news organizations lost the power that audiences gained, those news organizations also lost the trust of their audience, and they saw their audiences shrink. Fewer people received a benefit vital for democracy that we all took for granted, which is verified journalism. Before social media and mobile media, when we got our news uh, in the form of the newspaper thrown on our doorstep in the morning or at 5.30 at night when we turned on the, the national television news from ABC, NBC, or CBS, it never occurred to us that every one of these stories that we're hearing, we need to go out and verify that perhaps this story is not true. Perhaps somebody who wrote it has no firsthand knowledge of what they're talking about. We assumed that these stories are coming to us from journalists, from reputable journalism organizations, from brands that we trust. We had high trust in news organizations. They were credible and they did the work for us. They investigated, they checked the accuracy, they sought the fairness and they verified the information before it came to us. Now we have so much information coming to us through social media from Aunt Sally to, to uh, the editors of a journal that we don't immediately know the quality of that information. We don't know how it was put together. We don't know the motives of the people who are spreading it. You know, it used to be the case that most of the news we received was from the process of verification. Now, when everyone can be a publisher and we're inundated with information, good and bad, true and false, the one thing we know for sure is that much of the information we receive is not verified. And I think that's an implication of power being transferred to the audience. When the power to publish was transferred to the audience, 
we didn't automatically also educate the audience to say, and now, so is much responsibility. We were late to realize and late to act on the fact that the audience by being so empowered now was being given much responsibility. Responsibility that frankly over the years it has not exercised and that news organizations have not warned about. I think more and more journalists have to be in charge of educating the public about the quality of the information they get. And I think that's an, uh, uh, an important future and ongoing role of journalism is to recognize, okay, the model that we used to operate under, one to many, the news organization to the community, that has been significantly weakened and is being uh, weakened every day as news organizations lose, lose subscribers. But the importance of information to people has only grown, particularly because there is so much information now. Journalists have a new responsibility, and that's the responsibility to educate the audience about how to verify information and how to examine information so that they can still ultimately act on what is the best, truest, uh, most honest information to reach them so that they can improve their lives. Now, I think it's, it's necessary for our democracy to fix these weaknesses and abuses of social media uh, with near universal media literacy training that news organizations should be conducting and uh, uh, talking about and warning about and letting people know that just because they now have the ability to get information and not have the news organization in that loop, it doesn't mean that the information is the best for them. And news organizations need to reinsert themselves into the loop of people seeking information, reinsert themselves not only as the, the provider of verified and trusted information, but also as the educator of the public, making sure pub the public realizes it has a greater responsibility before it automatically hits the retweet button. When Aunt Sally sends us something on, on Facebook, we shouldn't always like it. We shouldn't always pass it on. We should think about it. We should ask a few common sense questions. And in this process, I think we should also be re-examining the role and the power of social media companies, particularly like Facebook and Twitter. They reach more people than news organizations and they have fewer controls on them. Should we continue to say that an organization like Facebook that reaches a billion people and sells the, the data of those people to target their weaknesses with other information that refuses to remove or edit blatantly false political ads should we continue to say that that is nothing more than a manifestation of a free and open marketplace? Or should we say that organizations that have such power to affect our democracy must also have a responsibility to keep it healthy? News organizations that reach far fewer people have far more controls and more responsibility because it historically has been assumed that honest, verified news is tied to the health of our democracy and the benefits of our civil society. Should we continue to allow social media to be regulated as common carriers, like telephone companies, with no responsibility for what's said on their platforms? Can democracy thrive when only news organizations are made to be responsible about the information that they distribute? The incredible power and potential of social media to unite people across the globe in the same conversation is a gift to democracy and education that we must continue to examine and strengthen. The power of mobile and social media is that they are on every side of the digital divide. You name a divide and mobile media are fairly equally on both sides of that divide, whether it's young and old, or rich and poor, educated, uneducated, urban, rural, in country, out of country, uh, white, black, black, brown, you name it. 
and mobile media are there. Mobile media have given us a potential to be informed in ways that we never could have in the past. But now with that great potential and that great power, we also need to recognize that the old model is gone. The model of the gatekeeper, the model of one to many communication, and now the audience is empowered, the audience is strong, and the role for journalism now and clearly in the future is to, number one, advocate for itself and to teach the, the audience, the public, that ger verified journalism is a huge value and that you, the public, frankly, don't always want to be the ones and you don't have the time to verify every story that comes your way. You need journalists. You need to rely, rely on them. You want to rely on them because you don't have the, the time to investigate every story that, that is sent to you. The way that you can end up uh, using social media to the best of your ability is to continue to look to the journalism brands, the brands you trust, the brands that are uh, thrown on your doorstep or that come into your uh, house via cable or that uh, are on the internet or that you reach through social media, those same brands are the brands that you know and, and have confidence in and the role for the trusted journalism brand that verifies information so that you can have an easier life is greater than ever. I, I think that um, what we need to, to recognize is that this flow of information that comes from social media is so important to all of us that we need to continue to rethink its role in our democracy and realize how it can be used and improved to uh, improve the information that comes to us so that we can improve our lives. The challenge ahead is continuing to educate people of their responsibility, which is now far greater than it used to be under the old model of receiving information from a journalism organization. Now they receive it from so many places, from individuals they don't know. We need journalists to continue to educate people, not only about the importance of uh, accurate, verified information coming from the journalism organization, but also the responsibility of people to help verify information, not pass on anything that they see and think twice about the fact that when anyone can publish anything, there's a lot of junk out there. And the role of journalists now is to be the guide that help us sort through that junk and still continue to improve our lives. The role for journalism has switched from gatekeeper to guide. And that guide role is critically important for us and I hope that we continue to think about how we can improve it. Thank you.